Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to another episode of It's All Relative. Thank you so much for joining us once again. In our last episode, we talked about starting your own business, becoming an entrepreneur. Today we're going to discuss our more traditional form of employment, our 9 to 5, our day jobs in the corporate world. Every morning when we go into our offices, we have our ambitions and our goals that certain levels that we wish to achieve, whether that would be becoming supervisor, maybe manager, senior manager, director, and so on and so forth. But we all know that these aren't necessarily guaranteed. There's a certain level of expertise, skill sets, personality traits that we need to demonstrate in order to be able to reach those levels of success. Having said that, I'm extremely honored and very excited to have with us Brother Rizwan Kalfan, who is the executive Vice President and Chief Digital Officer at the TD Bank Financial Group. He's here today with us to take us through not only his career and how he has achieved his levels of success, but share some of the most important traits that we could all use in our lifetime, in our careers, in order to try and emulate that success. Rizwan, thank you so much for being with us here today. Oh, thanks for inviting. I'm uh, looking forward to this chat. Absolutely, Asant. Um, so the first question that I, I want us to, to kind of start this episode with is tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you started, where your career began. I know you've relocated as well a few times. Uh, maybe you can take us through, uh, through that to begin today's show. Yeah, sure. Um, so first I'd say that uh, uh, my job today is anything but a nine to five. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me put that record straight. Okay. But if I look back, uh, as you know, my heritage is uh, from Kenya, uh, East Africa. Uh, yeah. I grew up there. I still consider myself very much East African. It was a little bit confusing when you come to Canada and go to high school and people right. ask you, uh, <laughs> what is your ethnicity? And you go, I'm actually African. <laughs> um, yes. And they look at you strangely. But having said that, I went to high school here. I uh, went to University of Toronto. Uh, doing uh, quantitative economics and computer science. Okay. Uh, and I was doing my uh, uh, postgraduate when I realized that uh, I really wanted to go and join the workforce. Okay. Uh, and the first job, purely out of luck, at the Graduate Center was from Citibank. Ah, okay. And that's how I landed. It wasn't very thought out right, uh, or right. I wanted to be in banking. Mm. In fact, I probably didn't even know what the job was. I just <laughs> accepted because right. I wanted to go back into the workforce. Uh, fortunately, it was Citibank, and uh, it was uh, on the trading floor. Okay. Uh, you know, in the capital markets uh, right. area, where you know they had a job for a tester slash programmer, mm. and uh, with the programming background I had, uh, with a little bit of economics, I knew kind of something about finance. Right. But started my career there, and uh, from there, you know, worked at Citibank for almost nine years. Uh, traveling and relocating to uh, New York, uh, London, England. In right. fact, I spent five years in London, England. Two of my children are born there. Ah, but this is still with Citibank. With Citibank. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, like every Canadian, you decide once you have kids that you want to move back to Canada to right. be close to the grandparents. Of course, absolutely. Uh, everybody <laughs> I know has done that. And so I, my wife and I did the same right, thing. We right. moved back and uh, I joined TD. Uh, and uh, thanks to my wife, you know, she agreed for us to be relocated to Chicago where TD had made an acquisition. Okay. So I spent a few years in Chicago where mm -hmm. my third child was born. Okay. <laughs> and then the last, uh, you know, 13 years, we've been back in Toronto. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Toronto and Canada Absolutely. is a fantastic place. So in a nutshell, you know, that's kind of been my travels, working at two organizations, mm -hmm. Citibank and uh, TD. And uh, looking back, you know, I feel very fortunate. Absolutely. So one of the, the important things that always come up in any discussion when, it's, uh, when you're looking to get started in the corporate world or your first job, or it comes up in all the interviews and job descriptions, and that is uh, working in teams, teamwork. Yeah. That is, um, I'm guessing, obviously an, uh, an extremely important skill to have. Tell us a little bit about your definition of, of teamwork. What do you normally look for in somebody? Are there certain traits when it comes to teamwork that you look out for? I, I'd start with, uh, you know, that uh, everybody's unique, mm -hmm. you know, and you want to bring your whole self to work. Whatever right. your work environment, whether it's in a corporate world, whether it's in a small business, whether it's uh, in a startup, you want right. to bring your whole self. And, uh, you know, again, we live in a uh, environment that you are accepted for who you are. So when Correct. I look back, when I joined Citibank, as I said, it was a, a complete fluke that I joined the yes. trading capital market. Yes. 
but you know, I found myself in a team that was super smart. Not right. only did I have the least amount of experience, mm -hmm. I was probably more than underqualified. Everybody around wow. me had PhDs and postgraduates. Wow. And as I said, I'd actually, you know, quit my postgraduate at that time. Right. Uh, and, you know, a lot of them had a very different background. So, for example, you know, a lot of them were Mandarin speaking. So oh. from mainland China, who had moved to Canada as immigrants. Right. But these guys were super smart, guys and gals. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I as an introvert, you know, was having a hard time, you know, uh, fitting in. Oh, uh, okay. But, you know, I realized I had no choice. I had to learn from them. Correct. You know, for me to have an impact on the wider team, you know, and what we were trying to accomplish, I had to learn from them. And so I spent time uh, with them, learning from them. And they kind of took me under their wing and taught me things that till today I use. Really? And I keep in touch with a number of those folks, you know, looking wow. back over 20 years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, from what I learned. And if I fast forward, you know, to today, for example, different environment at right. TD, you know, where it's all about performing, um, you know, teams, Correct. high performing teams. Right. How do you effectively work in a team Correct. while being true to yourself? Mm. Uh, but, you know, making sure that you're not only looking out for your uh, outcomes, but you're looking out for the team's outcomes mm. because success depends on how the team performs. Correct. And Absolutely. so, you know, we've made, a, you know, lots of progress in constructing a team, especially with uh, agile methodologies. Mm. So an agile team is where you have a cross-functional team coming together. Right. So you have developers, designers, business analysts, marketing folks, right. product folks, right. all coming together with very different backgrounds right. to do something fantastic. Absolutely. In a manner that's uh, truly agile. It's fast. You know, the speed to market is improved. The efficiency is improved. Mm. And so I think that skill to basically work effectively in teams, you know, is uh, critical in any work environment especially so today. Amazing. Um, in, in relation to that, obviously the, we hear this phrase a lot, work ethic. Yeah. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because, you know, in, in our careers, um, as most of the, the audience uh, knows as well, you'll come across many different types of people, um, you know, and we, we constantly see those people who go above and beyond. They're, they're there every day, working very hard, above and beyond. And then you have those who, who, who I guess, for lack of a better way of saying it, uh, do the bare minimum. They just get by, you know, nine to five. This is what you're mm -hmm. supposed to do. Do exactly that and you move on. However, on paper, they still yeah. both, they're doing their job effectively. Yeah. So um, what, what is it that, how does one person demonstrate that work ethic? That, that I'm here, I want to go above and beyond. What do you think, how does somebody uh, effectively communicate that to the people that matter? Yeah, I mean, you know, there is presence and there is essence. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Right, and uh, I'm obviously a big believer in essence versus presence. Okay. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, you have to be true to who you are. You mm -hmm. know, if you have a family, get the right balance. Right. I'm not saying work less or I'm not saying, mm. you know, uh, do things differently. Do what's important to you. Right. But if making an impact is important to you, mm. you know, you don't always have to be present. Mm, right. So long hours, you know, especially with technology right now, right. you can be connected. So if I look at myself, you know, I'm normally on the 530 train. Back. Wow. Okay, oh, so back. I, Sorry, I thought yeah, going. Yeah. Okay, back. Going yeah. in, I'm normally on the seven o'clock train. You okay. know? And so a lot of, right. you know, my peers may be working longer hours, etc. But it doesn't matter, you know, because I come home, I want to have dinner with my family. Absolutely. That's important to me. I yeah. want to hear their stories. Yeah, you know? how and, their day went. Yeah. And, you know, and they have lots to say. And of I'm course. learning from them. You know, I right. mean, that's one of the things about family. You know, when you have kids, you know, uh, they keep you humbled. <laughs> right. Right. They keep you grounded. Right. Okay. Uh, to them, you're just their dad. Correct. And, Correct. you know, Absolutely. the stories they tell you, you know, tell you what's really going on in their lives, mm -hmm. which is fascinating. Anyways, yeah. I do my best to come back home to have uh, dinner with them. And, you know, what I do is later at night, I'll connect back in. Mm, so okay. with technology, I don't think you need to be present long hours. Right. But what you need to identify is how are you going to make an impact? Correct. You know, who are you and what is the best way you can make an impact? Hopefully in a team environment. Right. And, you know, for me, you know, when I look back, you know, and again, this is only me. So it doesn't mean that, you know, it's going to work for everybody. Right. You know, I'm just, you know, uh, looking back, you know, yeah. as a now an older person, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and uh, what I found is that I always had an innovation bent. I didn't know the word innovation, right. but I had an innovation bent. What that meant is I was looking for things to do in a different way. 
mm. you know, with an idea that I can do it better. So if I was right. given a task, I always looked at it and said, is there an easier, better way, way of doing the doing task? Yeah. Even if it was trivial to reconcile data sets. Right. You know, I remember going back to Citibank, you know, one of my jobs was to actually reconcile data sets, okay. which is, you know, arguably the most boring job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I found a way to write some smart macros that would mm. actually collect this data mm. and reconcile them on their own so that I could spend more time on evaluation, on analysis, ah, which was a okay. higher value add versus Correct. spending all your time on constructing those data sets and reconciling. Right. Okay, so if you fast forward to my current position, mm -hmm. you know, I'm part of a team that is passionate about enriching the lives of customers in right. a changing environment. That requires us to think differently on a daily basis, mm. how we actually embrace and adopt innovation so that we can deliver these experiences that are meaningful to our customers. Okay, can you give us a couple examples um, yeah, for sure. those who don't know? So one of the, you know, um, and again, this is not a TD ad, right, but right. I'm gonna throw it in. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that we were trying to solve for, say a couple of years ago, was that most Canadians have a hard time tracking their spending. Oh, on a monthly okay. basis. Mm -hmm. And you know, each of them try and budget and then try and track their budget. They use budgeting tools, but most of them give up because most of those budgeting tools you know, are retrospective. Mm. So it's okay. at the end of the month that you realize that you missed your goals. Right, right. So our team decided to go and partner with a FinTech out okay. of New York. Mm -hmm. And we came up with a experience. It's now launched for a year and a half and 1.1 million TD customers use it today. It's called TD My Spend. And the idea of TD My Spend was that you will not have to do a budget. Right. And it will be real time. Wow. So as you're making your spending decisions, it gives you real time insights, nudges, so you can change your behaviors based on what's wow. important to you so Absolutely. you can meet your financial goals. So that's a wow. real good example of how we made a huge impact to customers' lives and customers love it. They're constantly giving us feedback to improve right. it. And that's the other aspect of how you're co-creating with customers mm. to help them in their lives. I mean, there's no doubt we live in a very uh, transformational world right now and things change so fast. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, it's, it's, it's a great, great information. Um, next point that I wanted to, to uh, uh, get your feedback on is um, leadership development. Now, obviously, you know, there's people out there, and I'm sure you've come across them as well in, in, in your career, that demonstrate that extra edge. There's yes. people who are willing to take that responsibility, people who are, uh, are willing to uh, take on more risk. Um, what is your take on that? Is that? I'm sure it's something that's highly encouraged, but how, how do you look at it on, on, on a daily basis? Uh, how do you identify that talent? Um, when uh, when you see somebody who's willing to uh, who has the potential to take on a leadership position or even further than that, yeah, I've, I've seen and I've had the fortunate of fortune of working with many leaders, you know, or, or the course of my career. And when I go back from my early days, you know, I do feel blessed to have had mentors mm -hmm. and leaders that I looked up to. At that time, there was no formal mentor relationship, right? You know, but I had all these leaders, you know, who had a vision you know, who are inspirational, but yet, you know, they're grounded. Mm. They're very humble, you know, and very keen to help everybody around them to achieve their goals. Right, right. And so, you know, to me, you know, uh, being a leader is about, you know, inspiring others around you to achieve something that none of you could have thought of. Mm. And, you know, that's, that's a fantastic uh, position to be in. And, you know, fortunately, I'm in the position now but that's because I've had these experiences where right. I've learned from so many of these leaders. Right. You know, right. you cannot take yourself seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to create an environment. So if you right. come to my floor, for example, you know, as you walk in, the first thing you do is you play table tennis. There's a big table wow. tennis table. And okay. after five, you know, right. most of the developers, designers, you know, uh, teams come together to play ping pong. Wow. Uh, and so social is a big part of it, you know, Absolutely. making the environment fun. You know, making sure that it's an environment, you know, that actually embraces diversity, mm. that everybody is comfortable to bring their selves in. Because if they can bring themselves in, the true self, right, right. that is where they can be the best they can be. Correct. So, you know, you want to, as a leader, create this environment where people can maximize their potential, encourage everybody to basically work in a team effectively, mm. you know, have each other's back knowing that what you're all, you know, aspiring towards is something bigger than anybody would have imagined. Absolutely. To me, that's the goal. I'm still a student of leadership. <laughs> right. And I'm learning on a daily basis. I've managed large teams and I continue to manage large teams. It is a position of privilege. 
but at the same time it's very satisfying to see a lot of your team members develop you know mm. to their maximum potential my the biggest part of my job where i have the most satisfaction yeah. is when i see somebody you know who started out in the junior ranks and went on to become very senior hopefully more senior than myself to me right. that's a big accomplishment as a leader that is it's so excellent to hear that i love how you how you put it um, naturally you've had a, a, a very successful career, um, that's no secret. But what I wanted to go in is a slightly a tougher question. Um, and that is, take us through, if any, some of your, I don't want to say failures, but some of the setbacks. Uh, have there been any instances where uh, things may not have been going uh, your way and, and, and you probably uh, sat down and said, okay, wait, this isn't going where, where I want it to go. Yeah. Uh, any, can you take us through some of those stories, if any? If any? Um, I have a lot. <laughs> I mean, okay. you know, I have a right. lot of setbacks. A lot. In fact, I would say I've learned more from my failures than I've learned from my successes. Wow. Okay. Right? Uh, because, you know, the introspection, you know, on a setback is a lot more real. Because, mm. you know, when you actually right. succeed, it's all about celebrating. Correct. To a large extent, you know, it's somewhat superficial because you've achieved something. Fair enough. But when you've not achieved something and yeah. you have to sit back and kind of really think about it, the mm. learning experience is enormous. Yeah. You know, and, and I have a lot, so, but I'll, I'll, I'll go back to one where I was in England and mm. uh, I was doing fantastically well. I'm in my mid-twenties, you know, my wife and I, newly married, have gone over to England. We have fit into, you know, the new environment. We're making huge progress. You yeah. know, we're part of the community in Stanmore, right, you know, starting right. to make an impact there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was uh, asked to take on a challenge role uh, okay. in, uh, in England with a uh, manager that I respected. I'd okay. actually looked up to this manager. He was my mentor, not officially, but mm -hmm. I was always kind of watching and observing, right. you know, what are the skill sets that I want to actually develop? Mm. Anyways, he gave me this challenge opportunity and I was doing amazingly well. Right. You know, I was just like knocking it out of the park. Right. <laughs> and I'm thinking I was working hard, you know, uh, I was getting the right results. And then one day he called me into his office and said, hey, Rizwan, guess what? You're going to have a new boss. And so I'm like, oh, where are you going? He goes, no, I'm not going anywhere. You're just yeah. going to have a new boss and he's going to report to me. Okay. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, wait a second. Yeah. I just, you know, took on this challenge role. You know, I'm doing amazingly well. Yeah. And what, instead, what you did is you went and hired somebody else <laughs> outside the bank. Right. And brought this guy in, you know, to be able to manage me. So clearly I was very disappointed. Right. And in my first reaction was, oh, wait a second, this doesn't make sense to me. And I'll tell you, you know, uh, through the disappointment, what I realized is this new manager, Peter, his name was, Peter taught me things. I got along with him over the next two years. He taught me things that I would have never learned from the other manager. Wow. Right, so take a setback mm. and then take it as a learning opportunity to get to right. a much better spot. And Absolutely. I've had many, many such, you know, setbacks, right. you know, where, you know, the learning experience from that was immense. And I became a better person, a better leader for that. So, wow. you know, for those of us, you know, who, who kind of encounter this, you know, use it as a learning opportunity. That's what I've done. And, you know, it is truly beneficial as you develop your career. Excellent. No, it's such great information here. Um, uh, one of the important things, loyalty. Um, you know, we've, everyone has a different opinion on it. You know, there's times we see people who have been at the same firm for 30, 40 years. Um, mm -hmm. and, and yet then we have those who, you know, pretty, who jump around, you know, two years here, three years there, two years there. Is, is there any value for loyalty anymore? Is it, is it uh, perceived differently now as the world progresses? Has the definition of loyalty changed in, in, in your opinion? So, I mean, you're probably asking the wrong person, you know, given that I worked for only two organizations, <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, on paper at least. Right. Uh, but I have to say that in both organizations, you know, I've actually taken on so many different roles. Right. I never felt like I was working for just one organization or mm. two organizations. Mm. Uh, having said that, I think, you know, the concept of loyalty never occurred to me. Even though in hindsight, when you look at the data, and you say, well, wait a second, you over 20 three years, you only work for two organizations. Correct. Yeah. But, but the reality was that it was always about, you know, working in an environment where I could make an impact. Right. And as long as that environment allowed me, you know, to develop myself, mm -hmm. you know, and make an impact, that's where I was going to stick around. Fair enough. You know, and so for the question to each of us is that the environment that you find yourself in today, evaluate culturally. Mm. Does it have the right value system? 
you know, that you subscribe to? Does it allow mm. you to bring your whole self in? I know I repeated that many times, but it's really important. Mm. Does it allow you to maximize your potential? Right. And if that environment allows you to do that, then you know, you'll build loyalty in that environment and hence that organization. If it doesn't, then sit back and say, is there another organization? Is there another environment that I can actually develop faster? Right. You know, what I'm finding, you know, um, with uh, the so-called digital natives of the millennials, you know, they are a lot sharper than I was okay. <laughs> when I was okay. their age, yeah. right? And they can evaluate much faster whether that environment, you know, actually, you know, allows them to be the best that they can be. Mm. And so they are willing to switch a lot faster and make right. decisions a lot more swifter than I Correct. was. I was ah, a little bit slow, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, so, you know, in my time, you know, when I was actually a fresh grad, you know, you felt it was privileged to work in a bank or in an organization and you tried different things, you know, as long as, you know, you felt you were making some progress. But, you know, what I find is with the fresh graduates is that they want to make an impact today. Mm, instant, yeah. You know, and so if they find a better environment, they're willing to switch faster. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Okay, excellent. Um, just to, to, uh, to conclude things now, um, there's a lot of people coming out of university looking for their first, first job. There's people who are currently uh, in the corporate world looking mm -hmm. to make a move um, you know, for, towards bigger and better. Is there anything that we may not have discussed today that, that, you, that the advice that you'd have for them? Something that we may not have touched upon. I know we've touched on working in teams, work ethic, uh, leadership, uh, development, dealing with failure. Is there anything, that, that, that anything else you can say um, to somebody who's looking to start out his career, somebody who's looking to make a move within his career. Um, any, anything that, that, that comes to mind? You know, I'd say, uh, you know, we covered a lot of points. The one that uh, we probably didn't cover as much, and I want to be explicit about it, is that, you know, once you land yourself, whether it's in an organization, in a position, or whether mm. it's in an entrepreneurial environment, mm. you know, it is a privilege. And live in the moment. What I mean by that is a lot of folks, you know, that I meet are always thinking ahead, you know, right. and saying, I want to go here and I want to be there. Right. And I'm saying, you know what, you are in a position. There are thousands of people, you know, who would rather be in your position. In that position, wow. That's and so the way you want to think about it is that, you know, how can I be the best in this position? Right. In the world. Wow. Because it's a global village. Yes. And there are people around the globe who are willing to actually come in and take that position. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm all for development. I'm all for ensuring that, you know, you meet your career aspirations. But more importantly, be the best, the very best in the world in the position that you are before you start to think forward. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I'm going to personalize this a little bit. I know you're a huge tennis fan and an even bigger Roger Federer fan. Yes. Do you see number 20 coming? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. I mean, he's playing fantastic. Yeah. You know, he's, uh, you know, we talked about a little bit about innovation. We talked a little bit about changing times. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, changed his game over the years, you know, yeah. uh, to fit, you know, the environment that he is in. Absolutely. So he can be the best, you know, of in his time, you know, and uh, there is no doubt in my mind, you know, that if he stays healthy, if his yeah. back holds up, yeah. You know, I'm sure that's the expert opinion yeah. that, uh, you know, his game is, you know, one of the best, if not the best. And uh, I could see him over the next year, you know, picking one, maybe even two Grand Slams. And where would those come? Definitely not the French. You know, I mean, hard courts <laughs> and uh, grass. I mean, he would be, he won Wimbledon without losing a set. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, so he has to be the favorite you know, for the next Wimbledon if he's yeah. healthy. Right. And picking up one uh, or two of the next uh, few hardcore Grand Slams, be okay. it uh, US or uh, Australian, Australian yeah. you know, he has to be one of the favorites, if not the favorite. Excellent. Uh, Rizwan, I, I'd like to uh, thank you so much. Um, I think some of the stuff that you shared uh, with us today will not only benefit a few of us, it will benefit a lot of us. This is great information. We need more information like this. And I'd like to thank you once again for coming on the show and sharing all that information with uh, us. Look, I'd like to uh, congratulate you. I know you're doing this, uh, you know, as uh, something that's going to help the wider community. I applaud, uh, applaud you for that. Anytime you need any information from me, feel free to reach out thank if you. it makes sense. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. I hope you've all enjoyed today's episode. Um, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to reach out to us. If you want to see more content like this, 
Uh, please let us know if there's anyone you want to hear from. Please do let me know and I will do my best to make it happen. Uh, thank you so much once again for tuning in and inshallah we will see you next week. Bye-bye.